Hello, Erica here today, and here's the thing I hate, romance. <laughs> Not really. I don't really hate romance. I hate, like, really sappy, over-the-top romance and love stories. It's just not my thing. I If that's your thing, that's great. By all means, you do you. But it's not my thing. So I wanted to recommend five books that kind of have romances at their center but aren't too sappy. So I'm going to title this Love Stories for the Anti-Romantic in You. The first book I want to recommend is Americana by Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie. This is, first of all, a fantastic novel. Um, this is set against war-torn Nigeria, and it's the story of a Femalu and Obinze, and I have no idea if I'm pronouncing their names right, I'm sorry, who are in love when they are young, and then they each depart to go their separate ways. Obinze goes to London, and Ifemalu comes to the United States, and they kind of grow up separately and lose touch for a while, and grander things are going on around them. They're adjusting to life in new countries, and this is the story of Nigeria. It's also the story of the immigrant experience out of Nigeria, and at its simplest, it's a love story. Um, so again, not too mushy, but it, it gave me all the feels, you guys. Like, I could probably cry a little bit. The next book I have to talk about is The History of Love by Nicole Krauss. I've talked about this a little bit before. It's really hard to describe, so I'm going to read you the blurb. Because it's told through a bunch of different perspectives, and the blurb does a good job of summarizing it. It says, Leo Gursky taps his radiator each evening to let his upstairs neighbor know he's still alive. But it wasn't always like this. In the Polish village of his youth, he fell in love and wrote a book. Sixty years later, and half a world away, 14-year-old Alma, who is named after a character in that book, undertakes an adventure to find her namesake and save her family. With virtuistic skill and soaring imaginative power, Nicole Krauss gradually draws these stories together toward a climax of extraordinary depth and beauty. Um, this book did make me cry a lot. I think I featured it in a video that was called, like, Books Made Me Cry, and it made me cry a lot because the romance at its summer center and the love between these characters is so touching and so whole and beautiful that it just, like, blew my mind. Like, thinking about it right now makes me want to cry again. I can't talk about it anymore. The next book I have is Giovanni's Room by James Baldwin. Um, many of you probably know what this is about. This is set in Paris in the 1950s, and it is about two men who start kind of a tumultuous um, love affair. And <laughs> this is not one that, like, ends particularly well as you would expect from this book. It's a very sad book. Um, but again, the relationship between these two characters is so raw and so intense that I just thought it was amazing. It's again, it's not sappy, it's not joyful, it's not fairy tale-esque, like, no, none of that. There's no white horses or castles at the end of this. Um, but it is really beautiful and really heart heartbreaking. The next book I have is Ernest Hemingway's The Garden of Eden. This is a lesser known work of Hemingway's that was published posthumously, and they're pretty positive that it was not um, finished at the time. And it's a very strange book. It is not a good place to start with Hemingway, but if you've read some Hemingway, I do recommend it. This is the story of a young couple who's living on the seaside, and the wife kind of likes to gender role play in bed. It's not kinky at all, but it kind of twists gender on its head a little bit, which is so strange for Hemingway. Um, and again, just really beautiful. Um, the characters are kind of nonchalant, and at the same time, they're learning a lot about each other and about their relationship. Mrs. Dalloway is probably not a book that many people would call a love story. And Mrs. Dalloway is not the easiest read ever. I know, Virginia Woolf is not the easiest. But this book is absolutely beautiful. And at its heart is Mrs. Dalloway, who's planning a party and reminiscing on her childhood and kind of the love that could have been and the life she could have had. And Again, it just felt so real and so authentic. And, you know, you've been in those situations where you meet up with old friends and you start to think back on what had happened and what maybe could have happened. And that happens to me more as I get older. But um, it's really stunning. It's totally worth the time commitment and the concentration you're going to have to put into it. 
and I just, I love it to pieces, so highly recommend this. So, those are love stories that will give you lots of feels without making you want to throw up. <laughs> That's all I have for you all today. If you have any other stories to recommend to me based on my love for these books, please do so in the comments. I'm always on the lookout for books like these. I love them all. And I will see you all next time. Goodbye!